following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-445-1044. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good morning from TFNN. Welcome to the April 28th. Terrific Tuesday edition of today's opening bell on the Trader's Edge. I'm your host, Steve Perseverance Rhodes, who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope each and every one had a magical Monday. It's great to be back uh, with you. Sorry about yesterday morning's show out there. Hopefully the system stays up and running. Let's make sure that you and I, we do everything, no matter what, that we do everything we can to have an extraordinary Tuesday. And, of course, the easiest way to do that is to always remember that life happens for us, not to us. That's right. When you and I, when we make that one little shift, it means that we can find the gift that's right, the gift in every set of circumstance that life is going to toss at us. That's the easiest way to, well, that's the best way to live, in my opinion. Of course, what I want you to most, mostly know is this. I'm absolutely grateful for your presence here this morning. Thanks so much for joining me. I'm absolutely here to serve you, so feel free to pick up that phone. Dial on in at 877-927-6648. Of course, internationally, you can call in at 727-445-1044. Maybe I'm not covering an area of the market that you're uh, looking at. Uh, maybe you've got a question out there. I'm here to serve you. Maybe you've got some eyes on your charts that see something a little different than I do. Better to have four eyes than two eyes out there. Hey, this is Terrific Tuesday. Of course, none other than the Hotel California. Sponsored by Tiger Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to the show. Right now, we've got uh, Dow futures that are trading down uh, about uh, 32 points, trading out at 17,957. ES Mini off three and a half points at 2101. NASDAQ down three points, trading at 4521. Russell 2000 off a couple of points. King Dollar back 336 ticks. She's trading at 9660. We've got movement in the uh, currencies. Uh, Hard currency, gold and silver, not so much. Gold's off about two bucks, trading at 12.01. Silver's uh, uh, flat. She's trading at 16.40. Lights we crude, up six pennies, trading at 57.07. Let's go ahead. Let's begin the day. Let's go see what went on overseas the last night. Let's start off and take a look at uh, Asia. Let's start uh, by looking at the uh, Shanghai. The Shanghai off 53 points, down 1%. See if there's any damage out here as we pull this over the side. The answer is no. No damage that we can see. What we know about the Shanghai, it's up and over the uh, 0.618 retracement level of a very long-term uh, top to uh, bottom out here. I think this is where the system crashed yesterday. So let's see if we can uh, make sure it doesn't crash. Now, what we're talking about here is from its highs back in uh, 2007. Right. This is how weak it has been. But now it's the uh, strong uh, dog. You tell you, know, Basil talks about sector rotation. How about just simply market rotation? Maybe the volume that's coming out of the market here in the U.S. is actually going in elsewhere. Hmm. Something to think about. If we do take a look at that high in October of 2007 down to the low in 2008, you can see that price was, well, first on a uh, monthly chart. We're about to end the month. It's the 28th. We just have a couple more days in the month. You've got one of the widest ranging bars that we have seen. Well, you've got the widest ranging bar that we've seen to the upside. And that's how it's coming in that 0.618 retracement level. What does that communicate to both you and I? Markets do not end on wide ranging bars, either the upside or to the downside. That doesn't mean that it can't. It just primarily doesn't that primarily doesn't that's pretty lousy uh, grammar out there let's basically say it doesn't markets do not end on wide ranging bars out here and when you come into a area of resistance a 0.618 retracement level can be an area of resistance and you see a wide ranging bar duck get out of the way because you know that is not a light at the end of the tunnel that you are seeing that is a train that is rolling right towards you and this is a train this is not a train wreck this is a train on its way to its next stop and that's 542802 as we take a look at the uh, monthly chart that is the uh, shanghai so no damage as we take a look at last night's action if we go take a look at the hang sang up 9 points so a flat market inside the hang sang what is it doing 
I know the Hang Seng, strong like bull, on its way to the uh, 28, 8, 21 level out here. You know, big signs of uh, strength, the largest, one of the largest uh, signs of strength that, uh, I, that I have seen. It had a 1,685-point move from open to the uh, top of the uh, bar on April the uh, 9th. Now, uh, it, it, it pulled back after that, but that's a heck of a move out there. You know, inside that was a on a twenty three thousand sixty. It's nearly well. What is that? That's a five six percent. Well, I guess it's only what six percent, ten percent would be twenty three hundred. No, it's it's you know it's probably seven percent. In any event, here's the uh, deal. My charts are not showing. Hey, Al, uh, maybe you could. Uh, thanks for that uh, little warning message there. Uh, let me uh, check with the uh, control room because if they're not showing, that's not uh, good. Um, they're checking into it. I'm going to go ahead and maybe I can uh, repost uh, because, you know, it's all it has been shown. It's uh, Z, they say. Maybe somebody else in the den uh, can uh, chime in if you would here in a moment. Just let us know if you're seeing the uh, charts out there. So inside the Hank Sang, she's on her way up to the 28,821. Yeah, Z, it might be something with your, uh, with your uh, system. Sorry about that. But I do know how it feels. Problems with uh, system problems out here. Yesterday was really a trip at about uh, from about this time until about uh, five minutes or ten minutes to uh, ten out there. In any event, uh, so that's the uh, hang saying. Let's take a look at the Nikkei up 76 points last night, up about four tenths of a percent. Now the Nikkei just really hanging out here at the uh, highs. It's got a couple A to B equal CD patterns that are underway. It suggests that the uh, Nikkei wants to make a move up to about the 20,808-ish uh, type area. Um, you know, so I don't see anything really bearish, at least certainly not yet inside of the Nikkei. Now, let's go take a look at what's going on over in Europa. Let's go take a look at the DAX over in Germany. The DAX here right now just really been trading sideways. It made a uh, made a retracement, slight retracement here back into April 17th. That low is 11.67459. If that low gets taken out, then you've got an A to B equals CD to the downside. Otherwise, we're just seeing basically a sideways-ish consolidation since the breakout, right, if we just take a look at bars, we don't have any volume here. So all we have, all you and I have is uh, by taking a look at the bars, what the uh, uh, what the uh, bulls and bears are, what the buyers and sellers are communicating to us. And so we know by taking a look at that March 11th uh, trading session, let me turn off the TAS market profiles out here. What we know about the uh, DAX out here is this thing had a nice breakout session. And what do you like to do? You like to buy breakouts. Now, with regard to the breakout session, that's somewhere between 11,531 and 11,822.53. That's really all that you and I know at this stage. We have not seen any kind of a uh, breakdown. Um, now, what we can say is that price was moving back for a couple of days here april 16th april 17th into that uh, breakout area it had a couple of its own uh whitish style ranging bars to the downside but uh, this says to both you and i this 11 55 is a strong area of support inside of the dax if we take a look at the uh, FTSE out here no damage done yet. The FTSE here still trading above its 1999 highs, 69.50, 60. I don't remember a 3,000 point consolidation or so. If it can, in fact, stay above this level, it has for, you know, I think the last three out of four weeks out here. So 69.50, 60 is going to be our line of demarcation for the FTSE to communicate to both you and I what she is doing. At this stage, it's still breakout fever. Now, a little different story here in the U.S. stock market. Of course, what you and I know about the U.S. stock market is basically it's gone, you know, nearly nowhere. Nearly nowhere. Probably not. Uh, I'm not going to pass the uh, grammar school test here this morning. But if we take a look just on a quarterly basis, again, let's just pull this up. I know this is painful. But if we take a look at where we began the month of uh, January, that's this candle right here. The price point in the uh, Dow was um, 17,823. Yesterday, the close was 18,037. So about a 200 point move in four months. Right. We got January, February, March, April. Uh, almost uh, four months, I should say, because we're a couple uh, days away from that. But basically, no movement at all. Of course, if you take a look at a quarterly chart, there's really nothing bearish at all. In fact, the higher close out here, because last quarter was a, of course, we're, this is a quarterly chart, so forget about that. That's, that takes us into uh, June. So what the heck was I 
thinking or what the heck was I drinking. But let's take a look at the monthly chart out here. If we look at the monthly chart here, just to put things in perspective with regard to the uh, Dow out here, there's really no, there's there, not really, there's no bear sign out here inside of the Dow. It still says it wants to get to 18,552. Well, if that's the case, let's go see what the uh, long-term chart out here. Let's go take a look at horizontal resistance, see what we've got. Well, we take a look at our horizontal trading range uh, boundary lines out here. And what we can see here from a, a monthly basis that the uh, significant level of support. Well, let me see here. This is a weekly chart. I'll leave the, uh, let's change this to a monthly chart. What the heck? Let's take, a, we were looking at monthly before. I should at least be consistent, right? Let's be consistent. We'll turn off the uh, weekly charts or weekly. Uh, uh, I was going to try to turn off the weekly. What did I do? Uh, display weekly. There we go. Now we got the uh, weekly turned off. So if we take a look at the, these are the monthly horizontal trading range boundary lines for the uh, Dow. And what we can see is that price is, uh, you know, this is the month. And so this could be the second out of really three months here, out of the past three months, if in fact the Dow, now it's the next couple of days. So 17,850 is really the level to be watching here at 18,037. So if the, uh, if the sellers, if the bears are really going to put the uh, kaput, kaput, uh, I don't know if they're going to, that doesn't even make sense. But if they're going to really put the kibosh here, that makes sense. If they're going to put the kibosh on the uh, market, they've got to get below 17,850. Why? Because that is a, a horizontal trading range boundary line. Oftentimes, Price moves from one level to the next. Take a look at what happened back in October of 2014. As it was just simply price was just coming down into the uh, trend line out there. That's a trend line coming off of the uh, 2011 lows out there. So that runs into a, a trend line that also runs into the horizontal level of support of its primary trading range, bounces up into where? Bounces up into the top, the resistance levels, and that's at the 17,850 level. Now you're above it. If you're above it, we stay above it, then that says that price can easily run to the 19,722 level. If we take a look at the uh, monthly chart here for the Dow, no bearish reversal signal yet inside of it. Now, let's go back. So we've seen basically no movement to 200 points so there's been a lot of back and forth there's actually no reason no reason that i can think of to think that anything else is not going to actually take place even though, you know, the uh, Dow here is dealing with this uh, resistance level of 17853 it's actually tackling it at the wrong time of the uh, year we're about to uh, move out of a the favorable seasonal cycle and so that says that things could get a little rocky rocky road it's not even even though the last name of roads i don't even like rocky roads ice cream out there but maybe you do that what's rocky roads it's got a little bit of everything they they throw like the kitchen sink in on that they throw marshmallows and and nuts and uh, the chocolate piece of it's okay i'm good with that in any event uh, uh let's take a look at so what should we take a look at now we looked at a couple indexes, but I probably should move back and take a look at what's going on inside of the uh, futures contracts, right? So let's go do that. Let's go take a look at, well, you know what we should do is let's go take a look at Apple out here because that's really going to be a, a key in the marketplace. If we take a look at Apple in the pre-market, close to 132.65, trading right now at 134 and change, 134.50. When we take a look at Apple, let's not look at the monthly chart, let's look at the uh, daily chart because today could be an extremely telling day for both you and I with regard to at least the uh, Qs and certainly with regard to Apple. The swing point that it's dealing with here is 133.60. So it's only trading at 134 and change in the pre-market. The question is going to be, because there's going to be volume. Can we see a close above 133.60? Only 69 million shares out there. Pretty darn good chance we'll see more than 69 million shares today. The question is, is going to be a close above 133.60? If it is, guess where price heads to? 150.60, 158.48, 168.50. It heads to the moon. This is Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back, folks. Do you know the seven most critical factors that influence every decision you make and how not knowing these will jeopardize the health, the wealth, and the relationships you deserve? I'm Steve Rhodes, morning host at TFNN.com, and for the last quarter of a century, I've studied and used the secrets of human growth, the same formulas used by leaders of nations, billionaires and millionaires, and the most successful athletes on the planet. Would you like to break through any obstacle that gets in between you and the success you deserve? Would you like to turn fear into strength? If you could find a way to achieve, be fulfilled, and live a life of meaning, wouldn't you want to know the answer? 
I'll teach you the factors that control your state of mind and the drivers that impact every thought, emotion, behavior, and action we take in my new webinar, The Psychology of Trading. Join me for this two-part online event where I'll unveil the secrets to human pattern recognition because they're not what you think. And soon, you'll have the health, the wealth, and the relationships you deserve. Just go to the homepage of TFNN.com and click on The Psychology of Trading to begin your journey now. Trade with confidence and clarity while using the software that thousands of institutional traders rely on to make the best and most accurate decisions. Choose from a thousand equities, currencies, and futures instruments utilizing the TAS architecture. As seen on Bloomberg terminals worldwide, the TAS Profile Scanner is a benchmark technical filtering system that thousands of traders rely on, and now you can too. For a limited time for TFNN subscribers only, we've reduced the price to just $97. That's over 70 25% off. John Logan hosted a special subscriber only webinar in December, and you'll gain access to that archive as well, so you can learn exactly what the TAS Profile Scanner can do for you. Try this product out. No matter what you trade, the TAS Profile Scanner can help you make more informed trading decisions. There's no obligation to pay anything. Don't let this offer pass you by. Get your 30 day free trial to the TAS Profile Scanner today by signing up at TFNN.com. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den, but wondered, what exactly is it? The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information, and a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of your favorite TFNN shows, plus see all the charts as they happen, live, during those shows, and have access to all those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days. It will greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN. Dot com now. Tiger TV is an exciting way to experience TFNN programming, see high-definition video, giving you crystal clear charts, as well as seeing some of the faces of TFNN's highly acclaimed financial experts with crisp, full-fidelity sound. Catch Tom O'Brien, John Logan, Steve Rhodes, Basil Chapman, Larry Pesavento, Think or Swim, David White, Andy Hecht, and Daryl Martin in crystal clear, high-definition audio and video. Tiger TV, exclusively at TFNN. FNN.com. Steve, take your phone calls now. now. Toll free at 1 877 927 6648. Internationally at 727 445 1044. Welcome back, folks. Uh, Dow Futures down 29 SP off three and a half. Let's go out to uh, Philadelphia to our man, uh, John. John, thanks for calling. Thanks for holding. How are you doing this morning? Mr. Rhodes, listen, we are very grateful that you recovered from your um, Internet difficulties yesterday. I put in a little extra change this morning, just to see if we can keep it going. <laughs> Good for you. Good for you. Steve, um, I admire your uh, discipline in doing cycle work and uh, using all the pattern tools available to you. Yes. So the question I wanted, or excuse me, the topic, right, it's more a topic rather than a question. It's the S&P 500 cash. Yes. Um, I know you had been um, a proponent of looking for a higher price in through the first half of the year with some zigs and zags. We've gotten that. And now here we are with the S&P cash having made new highs yesterday. The Chapman wave count on the monthly chart has now extended into leg G. Now that we're almost to May, with that pattern, 
Can you share with us what you think the implications thereof might be? So on the monthly chart, if we take a look at the S&P, um, we'll start off just to understand where there's some horizontal resistance and support out here. So that's the first place that we will start with. And what, what I would... What I know about markets is this, is that markets will continue to go up until we see some type of bearish reversal signal. And markets will go down until we see some type of bullish reversal signal. And I know that seems kind of maybe simplistic, but it is just simply as you take a look at a chart, it's just really kind of one of those matter of fact things. So from a monthly perspective at this stage here, price says that it ought to be able to get up to the 2185 level. And if there's any kind of uh, movement to the downside, um, you know, you're looking at, hey, you could look as low as 1924, which is a pretty big range, 1924 to uh, where we're trading at right now at 2108. But 1924, if price could even pull back to that level, that would be a significant level of uh, support out there as I take a look at the uh, monthly horizontal trading range boundary lines. Now, with regard to, I'm going to put up a couple of other charts here on a monthly basis, or one other chart at least from a monthly basis. Let me just switch over to that. We're going to take a look at the S&P 500 because one of the things, folks, that uh, John mentioned here, was that on a monthly basis, if we take a look at that Chapman wave counts, you know, my favorite count is that seventh inning stretch count. And as uh, John has uh, correctly pointed out, if you come off of the lows back in, uh, what is this, October of 2011, and you start counting the peaks to the upside, you're still in that uh, seventh wave as we speak right now. Now, here's what I know about what traditionally, what typically happens in the seasonal pattern, is that the sell in May... Uh, cycle is just simply because of a cool rhyming piece of it because they really can't uh, they really can't uh, I guess come up with a sell in June that couldn't come up with a good rhyme <laughs> but but the reality is there's usually that because that sell in May because of that psychology there usually is that initial uh, instinct that little uh, inflection of seeing a little bit of selling but the reality is that more times than not the uh, S&P or the Dow makes its high in uh, June or July late June, early July, like around the uh, July 4th time frame. So my expectation at this stage would be that that's really when the uh, market would go ahead and make its high. Now, is it a significant top? What you and I both know is that uh, from those seventh wave uh, signals, that's where the market can make the largest and quickest and swiftest move to the uh, upside or to the uh, downside. But the question is, you know, and, and Basil's the one that can better, uh, you know, uh, identify this for both you and I, is are we really only in our third wave versus the, uh, versus the seventh wave out there? You know, the S&P's got that consolidation breakout move that should take price to the 2350 uh, level out here. There's no bearish reversal signals. If anything, there was a bearish reversal signal that took place in uh, December of 2014. And that says that that high of uh, 2093.55 should really become good support. That's kind of like where you have a change in polarity. There's nothing more bullish than a failed bearish pattern, and that was it. So if price can hold that level, I say that the signal that the what the market is communicating to both you and I is that it wants to march into that 2350 level, wants to move up into maybe the at least the 2108 area, which is really its next horizontal trading range boundary line. So that's you know that's what I'm saying. But I will say that in my opinion, navigating this market this year, 2015, inside of the S&P, the Dow. Uh, NASDAQ uh, has been uh, a more difficult year for navigating because of all that sideways movement, you know, but that's, I guess that's kind of a, you know, boy, I didn't, I didn't have to actually go to science school to figure that out, I suppose, huh? Indeed. Steve, yeah. thanks so much for that discussion. I find that very helpful. I appreciate you it. You bet. You bet. That was John in uh, Philly. We get back, folks, from this break. Let's go see how this market's going to drop, whether it's going to pop or not. We'll be right back. In quiet markets, investors search for new trading opportunities. We'd like to introduce you to a new product that provides opportunities even in flat markets. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a new and innovative Chicago-based exchange registered with the Commodity Futures Trading Commission. And unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their trading platform. Nadex never charges a fee to use their platform, which even includes real-time charts and full customization 
optimization capability. Nadex's unique short-term binary options allow traders and investors to capitalize on strategies even when the underlying markets are quiet. Nadex's innovation has allowed them to come up with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at Nadex.com. That's N-A-D-E-X.com or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. Platinum, grains, crude oil, gold, copper, cattle, hogs, gasoline, natural gas, coffee, cotton, cocoa, and sugar. These are just some of the commodities mentioned in the most recent issue of Andy Hecht's Techno Mental Commodity Report. Andy publishes his weekly newsletter every Thursday morning, where he breaks down the commodity market and provides his subscribers with specific trading recommendations based on his trading methodology. By signing up for a free trial to the Technomental Commodity Report, you'll get a full 30 days to try out this powerful newsletter service and see for yourself the types of trades Andy has recommended for his subscribers. When you sign up for a 30-day free trial, you're under no obligation to pay anything. And should you decide to continue, you will lock in the low rate of only $79 a month. Sign up right now for the Technomental Commodity Report and make sure you're ready to catch the next big trade in commodities. For more information and to get started today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. If you're like me, you see the world's emerging nations as a very real opportunity, as these countries and their economies are developing right before our eyes. And you can rest assured that Everbank has spotted this opportunity too. In fact, they just recently unveiled the new five-year market-safe Future Economies CD. This is a CD that could really deliver, but you have only until May 7th to take advantage. Consider the fact, if the Future Economies economies currencies beat the US dollar over the CD term, you'll get all of the upside. And should they lose? No worries. There's zero downside risk here, as you'll still get back 100% of your deposited principal. Intrigued yet? The May 7th funding deadline is quickly approaching, so hurry over to everbank.com slash TFNN hyphen CD for more information, including important product details and disclosures. Once again, that's everbank.com slash TFNN hyphen CD. Everbank is an equal housing lender and member FDIC. Who says you can't take it with you? TFNN says you can. With your mobile device and TFNN's live radio streams, TFNN has put it all in the palm of your hands. No special apps to download. No subscription fees for live radio or Tiger TV streams. We say you can. Each and every time that the dollar ticks higher, S&P wants higher price. Each and every time that the dollar is ticking lower, guess what? S&P wants lower price. Dollar, the metals, and the S&P are going tick for tick. We say you can. The Tiger Financial News Network. Smart investors and professional traders know you can. TFNN.com. Educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. To the races. We got the dollar at 54 points. Trade out at 18,088. The SP is uh, flat. She's trading at 2109. The composite up two points. Trading at 5,062. Russell, 2,000. Up slightly up 66 cents. Trading at 1253. We've got the DAX off 150. The FTSE down 76. Gold is flat. Silver is flat. Light sweet crude is flat. Uh, uh, but what's not flat is uh, Etna. Etna is up uh, 3%, up $3 and change. Merkin Company is up 3 bucks. Vasco Data Security is up 250 Tesla's up 250 Baidu's up a couple bucks. Rent a Center up a buck 82. Iron Mountain Inc. up a buck 98. 1 800 Flowers up a buck 74. To the downside, we got IDEX Labs. That's up 19 bucks, 12%. Whirlpool getting a, a world this morning to the downside off $15. MDC Partners off 8 Containers store group off five parker hennepin off about five bucks echo labs down about four cummings off about four coach down three bucks out here so 
I'll just to uh, go back to, oh, uh, I might have changed this here, son of a gun, I was, because I was working on my uh, workshop. Uh, that My workshop, i got a workshop that I'm doing that begins next Thursday. You know, folks, we spend a lot of time taking a look at uh, different, I was, so I'm going to try to change things here to just uh, continue to answer uh, John's uh, question out there. But uh, we had to change something on one of my monitors, so now I've got to figure out... Uh, which monitor is that? I think it's this one right here. In any event, uh, but I've got a workshop next uh, next uh, Thursday that you can sign up for on, on the homepage of TFN.com. And we spend a lot of time, most of our time, taking a look at different uh, technical patterns inside the market in order to help us understand where price is going. We take a look at all those patterns on different time frames. So, you know, I would answer my question about what the market is doing differently on a monthly chart than I would on a daily, on an intraday, and so on and so forth. But the same patterns basically apply. But there's one pattern out there that really need, that really is a pattern that we don't spend a lot of time on. That's perhaps the, that is that is the most not perhaps it is the most important pattern that's out there, which is really answering the questions why each of us do the things that we do, why we make the decisions that we make, and it could be no more important. Well, there's really three areas of life, right? You've got the area of life of health, of wealth, and of uh, health, wealth, and uh, relationships. Those are your three primary areas of, I'll call them three categories of life out there. In any event, the uh, workshop, and I'm going to be, I'm really honored to be able to do that. So uh, uh, for those of you that are really, uh, you know, in that quest to be able to garner more knowledge, more information, about, uh, you know, this is not, this is stuff that I have learned from experts out here from the last uh, 25 years and have actually applied it. So I would not, like, I'd never ask you to do something I wouldn't do. And, and the only way that I can actually touch you is to have been touched by those things that I've been able to learn and observe out there. And that's really what it is I'm going to share over the, uh, over the two workshops that we do there on May 7th and May 14th out there. So come on over to the homepage of TFNN.com. Let me take you on a, a journey, a journey of a lifetime, a set of tools that you'll be able to use and pass down to others out there. You've got three different ways to be able to uh, gain access to it. Pretty easy one. If you've never been a newsletter subscriber, come on over to the homepage. Go ahead and check that out because you're within that 30-day uh, window out there. Current subscribers, you're already in. So uh, there's nothing that you actually need to do. And if you would just simply like to just gain access to this information, you can do that for 97, 97 buckaroonies out there. So uh, come on over to the homepage of TFN.com. But last night I was been working on the uh, been working on the uh, workshop uh, for the last several weeks out here. Yesterday was last night was the first time I actually started to give it uh, verbally. So you know it's it's like rehearsal. You got to uh, you know if you ever want to look, I'm pretty passionate about what it is that I do. It's I've always been uh, that way. Uh, of course, I've gotten more passionate as time has uh, gone on in uh, life out here. And to me, there is really no other way to, when you love what you do, you know, do what you love kind of a thing out there. And so that's really what uh, next Thursday is going to be about. But part of that really translates, you know, the way, you, I, like I have a, this other expression. I don't know if I learned this from somebody because I've been saying it for so long, but I'll give credit to whoever actually said it. But the way you do anything is the way you do everything. And, and, and that's just simply so true. Just think about it in life. Now, John had asked about the uh, seasonal pattern. There's really a couple seasonal patterns. The one that I think that he was referring to. Let me see if this uh, works out here. Oops, I got the wrong, uh, that was the wrong monitor. So that didn't work out there. Let me try this again. So which monitor do I want to grab? Let's try... Let's try this one. Let's see if uh, I should have done this during the break. No, that's not it either. Uh, I, folks, I can narrow this down because there's only so many monitors that I have. Well, there's quite a few. Uh, it wasn't that one. I don't think it's, it's not the primary. It wasn't that. It wasn't that. Let's try this one here. Let's see if uh, this is it. Voila, I got it. Okay. So, uh, and it is, oh, really, I had, I had a 50-50 shot of being able to hit it. So, it uh, looks like I got that. So, this is the typical seasonal pattern, which, by the way, the market really isn't uh, following. Um, if we take a look at that, if you're watching us on Tiger TV. And what, the reason I say the market isn't following along with this uh, pattern, just typical, this is only over the past 82 years with regard to its uh, cycle out here. <laughs> The market makes a high coming into that rally, that Santa Claus rally. Uh, typically, it ends right around the uh, first uh, couple of days of uh, January, maybe just simply because of, you know, the, the year-end money, 401k money, things of that sort coming into the market. And then the market uh, trades down lower, as it did this year, into the end of uh, January, early February. Now, that part of the cycle actually worked. Then the market moves up, and it moves up into the... Uh, 
a March time frame. Now, in this case here, it's the uh, early uh, March or the uh, middle of February time frame, really. Uh, February 18th to be specific, then moves down into a low into the early part of March, March 3rd specifically. And then it just simply motors on higher, motors on higher into that uh, sell in May cycle. Well, we know by taking a look at what the market hasn't done, by looking at the, and this is the Dow, by the way, that we're looking at, the Dow basically hasn't done anything all quarter, right? It uh, hasn't done anything for basically four months out there. So with regard to the seasonal pattern, we can say that the normal seasonal pattern isn't out there. And so, therefore, the whole idea of the even the sell in May cycle out here, you know, could really be a misnomer. But in answering John's question and answering to you, I can just tell you that mathematically, the market doesn't typically during the unfavorable seasonal cycle doesn't top out in May. Yes, you see a pullback, and then we see the market move higher, and then we finally see the market move lower, lower down into the October time frame. But we've got to question whether or not this is really the pattern that's in play, you know, or is uh, or is this the pattern? that is in play out here. And this is the pattern where it's with, uh, there's only, uh, I think, so it's years ending in five. So I think I've got eight to 80 years that I've taken a look at data. So what, I've got eight, uh, seven or eight uh, cycles that we can take a look at out here. But you know, what we would want to be paying attention to is this April 21st level. That's really what this date is here. And in the uh, in this case here, if we take a look at that five year cycle, look at the high that came in here. And that's right around the March 5th area. And what we've seen in our market, just write that down, I'll write it down, March 5th. You you know, as a turn point. And then you've got basically April 21 as a turn point. And then the market, in essence, really motors on higher. At this stage, I have to say that this is the actual analog pattern that may, in fact, be in play. Now, if you go back and we take a look at the Dow right now at the uh, moment, and we come take a look at the uh, daily, remember I said, uh, what, I said March 5th. Well, if you take a look at a high out here, it took place on March 2nd. Hopefully, uh, those of you that are listening uh, can follow along. will cut me a little slack and that the uh, Dow didn't exactly took its curtain call three days earlier. But it most certainly made a high back on uh, March the 2nd versus March 5th. Okay, so good. And then if we take a look at uh, lows, what did I say? It was supposed to be around April 21st. Well, April 1st certainly was the uh, low, and March 26th was the low. And on the uh, 21st out here, you know, I, is, this, is this the pattern that's in play? And I don't know the answer. I don't know that you know the answer either. I do know that uh, it's really important for us to be aware of those uh, seasonal patterns that are in play out here. So look, if the sell in May cycle doesn't work out here and uh, prices continue to run higher, uh, we know which analog pattern the uh, market is, uh, you know, is uh, following at this stage. What do we know? And just simply take a look at this chart here for the uh, Dow as we look at it. Um, it's making it's making higher lows. I mean, it's really that simple. You got the low back in February. You got the low, take it further back. You've got the low back in October of last year. You know, and then we saw a little bit of sideways movement, but it's making higher lows or consolidating bottoms out here. So it's making higher lows. In the case of the Dow, it's struggling a bit here to make these higher highs by being able to get over the March 3rd level. But that's really the only information, in my opinion, that's the only information that we've got to go on at this moment. So. Let's go take a look at a. Uh, let's go take a look at uh, currencies. Let's go look at the uh, currency market out here. Let's go see what's going on inside the euro versus the U.S. dollar index. Again, this is a uh, chart that's got a 10-minute delay on this, but as we take a look at it, what we know about the uh, euro is it's just really consolidating. It's consolidating. It's got to get up over the highs, basically from March 26. That high is a dollar 10 out here. Uh, it looks like it looks to me like that is where it's traveling to because it's already trading inside that uh, swing point. That low is dollar eight one point oh eight five six. So pretty good chance that the euro is going to make a uh, bid for the dollar uh, ten area. That's even in light of uh, you know whatever shenanigans are over going on over in Greece. You know the so-called Greece fire over there. So it looks like the euro is moving higher. If we go take a look at the Japanese yen, what is the Japanese yen doing versus the U.S. dollar index? It's really also consolidating out here. It still has an A to B equals CD to the upside pattern. That is until it takes out this hammer low. And I'm not saying that it's going to, but if it did take out that uh, hammer low from March 26, so we're dealing with March 26 out here so far across the board, that low is 118.33. That would then say, okay, we've got an A to B equals CD to the downside. Forget about the upside action out here. But of course, your favorite currency pair and mine 
is none other than the euro Japanese yen. If we take a look at the euro Japanese yen, it looks much like the uh, euro chart uh, versus the U.S. dollar index at this stage, and it's moving higher. That bodes well. That is good fuel for the uh, fire in the uh, markets out here. That's what that is. That is the good liquidity inside the market. So that's moving higher. We saw prices move lower a bit yesterday. You know, it was a fairly decent uh, turn. In fact, probably well, it had to be key reversal. I didn't even take a look at that. Yeah, yesterday looks like, no, was yesterday a key reversal in the Dow? Let me see. The answer is no. Uh, you know, we'd have to say maybe it's a bearish engulfing candle. You know, the question is, was this a good enough trend that's actually taking place? You know, maybe it was in the S&P. No, it probably was the Russell 2000. That's probably, well, the S&P, I take it back. The S&P had a key reversal session yesterday. That is where, well, it's, it had an outside day. Hard to, it really, really isn't a key reversal session out here. And there's a big difference. Key reversals, in my opinion, have much more meaning. And the reason is because the market's responsibility, believe it or not, is to stretch in both directions. It's like a rubber band. And when the market gives you a reversal signal when that rubber band is stretched, that's when it can snap, right? That's when you got those snapbacks, either the upside or to the downside. And that's where those reversal signals, how the market speaks to you and I, it speaks in that uh, language of, uh, speaks in that language language of uh, of uh, candlestick uh, charting you got an outside day now outside days are worth noting out here uh, you know especially when it's up at a resistance uh, level and that resistance level being the highs out here from February 25th but I will tell you that um, I'd have to go back and look but my recollection is these uh, outside days haven't been uh, responding very well at identifying significant turns in the uh, market but uh, the S&P did have one of those uh, yesterday so we looked at the currency pairs. Um, still flattish uh, type market except for the composite. Apple now trading lower. So let's go see. Let's go check in on Apple. Did it get above that uh, swing point? Well, it uh, got, yeah, it got above it. It so far it has uh, turned back. Now, this is more closely affiliated with what you would call a key reversal day. So I didn't really finish that thought out there. And I noticed I left a few of you hanging. So my apology. Apparently, uh, things happened for us. And that for us was, okay, go take a look at the Apple chart. And uh, so that was that two by four, you know, that was uh, being hit upon my head out there. Now, this is potential for a key reversal day. The difference being is that if we just simply utilize that relative strength indicator, that 14 period relative strength indicator, and that's when price gets up towards the 70 level. That's the white line coming across my screen. Didn't actually get up to 70, got to 67. That's close enough for me. Likewise, when it gets down to the 30 level, doesn't have to get to exactly 30. That's when things get a bit what we'll call oversold. So you got an oversold this area. you got an overbought uh, type area. But what I like to do with regard to key reversal sessions is use those stretch points. Maybe it's A to B equals CD patterns as well. Now, what do you need to have in order to have a key reversal session? You have to be in a stretch condition. Okay, so we've got that here. That's uh, eliminated. Number two, you've got the uh, market needs to uh, trade. The day's session needs to uh, trade above and below the prior day session. Apple's already done that out here. Uh, and then, thirdly, it just simply has to uh, close in the uh, direction that price was not coming from. This just means it has to close in the opposite direction. It just has to be one tick lower. It means even if Apple were to get back, it opened up at... Um, 134.46. If it closed at 134.45, it actually would go ahead and qualify as a key reversal session. Volume so far, 27 million shares inside Apple as it's pushing into that swing point from February 24th. That's got 69 million shares. You know, will this be will this be the end? Apple actually is pushing higher into the swing point today, so it says that the price ought to be back up there. At least that's its message. Now, let's just for the heck of it. For the sake of uh, blanks and giggles, you know what I was going to say out there. Uh, let's actually just take a look at what's going on on a 10-minute chart out here. So we can see the uh, volume. Now, yesterday, this, uh, this has got the uh, pre-market in there, the post-market in it. So if we take a look at the Apple release of uh, numbers out here, quite a wide-ranging bar that had some pretty decent volume. And that was the 30-minute uh, bar from uh, 4 to, no, it was had to be 4.30 to 5 out here that went from a range of 129 so it looks to me like that's where apple is headed to and it had volume of 5 million shares so it looks like apple's headed to 129.91 we'll see what happens when she gets down there there she blows this is d roads with tfn we'll be right back folks
you take a hands-on approach to managing your investment strategy. You're always looking for the next trading opportunity to magnify your perspective. Direction Shares connects sophisticated traders with a powerful array of ETFs from a wide range of asset classes. The markets may go up and down, and you want tools for both sides of the trade. Discover how we can help at DirectionShares.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction Shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction Shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction Shares at 800-851-0511. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors employing dynamic strategies. Investors in the fund should understand the consequences of seeking daily investment results, understand the risk of shorting, and intend to actively monitor and manage their investments. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Do you know the seven most critical factors that influence every decision you make and how not knowing these will jeopardize the health, the wealth, and the relationships you deserve? I'm Steve Rhodes, morning host of TFNN.com, and for the last quarter of a century, I've studied and used the secrets of human growth, the same formulas used by leaders of nations, billionaires and millionaires, and the most successful athletes on the planet. Would you like to break through any obstacle that gets in between you and the success you deserve? Would you like to turn fear into strength? If you could find a way to achieve, be fulfilled, and live a life of meaning, wouldn't you want to know the answer? I'll teach you the factors that control your state of mind and the drivers that impact every thought, emotion, behavior, and action we take in my new webinar, The Psychology of Trading. Join me for this two-part online event where I'll unveil the secrets to human pattern recognition because they're not what you think. And soon, you'll have the health, the wealth, and the relationships you deserve. Just go to the homepage of TFNN.com and click on The Psychology of Trading to begin your journey now. Tom O'Brien's weekly gold letter, The Gold Report, gives complete and concise coverage of the entire gold market. Inside, you'll get Tom's commentary on gold, the dollar, the rand, the bond, the XAU, the HUI, and detailed coverage of nearly 25 mining stocks. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock trade. The Gold Report is a long-term newsletter where the focus is on building real wealth through the management of a successful portfolio of gold stocks. With a lifetime of knowledge and almost 12 years of writing his informative weekly newsletter, The Gold Report, Tom O'Brien can provide you with the important market information to help you make better trades in the gold market. Don't let the next bull run in gold pass you by. To get a month-long free trial to The Gold Report, an $85 value, visit the front page of TFNN.com today. Basil Chapman has just announced two live workshops that he'll be hosting April 28th and May 5th that only subscribers to his opening call will gain access to. On April 28th, Basil will host a 45-minute live online workshop, The Essentials of the Chapman Wave, where he'll teach the basics of the Chapman Wave notation that Basil created and uses daily in his trading and newsletter recommendations. On May 5th, Basil will host a second 45-minute workshop, where this time he'll revisit the 1929 market comparison webinar and provide his attendees with an updated take on the socio-economic trends Basil has spotted currently taking place. If you're an opening call subscriber already, then your seat is already reserved. If not, then sign up for a 30-day free trial to the opening call today. You get a month of Basil's daily newsletter, The Opening Call, along with two live workshops coming up. Don't miss out on this offer. Sign up for Basil Chapman's opening call newsletter today on the front page of TFNN.com. Catch Steve Rhodes as he teaches techniques on technical analysis using pattern recognition, celestial charting, Fibonacci, and other tools. The Trader's Edge, next on TFNN. Welcome back, folks. Uh, Dow's up about 30 points. S&P is totally flat right now. The composite's off nine. Russell's up a point and a half. Uh, Apple's down a buck 60. Huge volume inside of Apple, 32 million shares. So it's going to be interesting to see who wins the uh, battle today. Uh, sellers certainly going up against Apple's uh, war chest of cash out there. And that is absolutely a, a war chest. So, uh, you know, they're in the game here to support the uh, stock. We'll see who wins that uh, battle. Uh, we didn't really take a 
look at uh, stocks that were popping and uh, dropping. So let's uh, let's do that here just for the next uh, couple of moments. Let's take a look at Whirlpool off 14 uh, bucks right now. They generated uh, revenues of $4.8 billion um, versus four point four, so they beat their top line. And uh, bottom line here, looks like they beat that nicely as well. But this thing is getting trashed. They must have missed uh, estimates out of here. It has actually... Uh, it's 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 broken um, it's broken a B point of an A to B equals CD to the downside pattern. Looks like it's doing that with volume, because the uh, B point in essence has got 1.4 million shares. You've already done. 654. But it looks like what uh, Whirlpool is going to do is trade back into a couple of signs of strength out here. And we'll see if these levels can actually act as a support. And that right now is somewhere between the areas of uh, 172.85, 170.99 is what it uh, looks like. Out of curiosity, let's go see what the A to B equals CD pattern here looks like to the uh, downside. See if that happens to just run right into that uh, breakout area. And it really does. The 1 to 1.272 takes you right down into that uh, range. So this is gapped down to the 1 to 1A to B equals CD. It says to me that uh, Whirlpool likely headed to the 171-ish area where it ought to uh, find support. Ticker symbol there is uh, WHR. Uh, so uh, folks, uh, in wrapping uh, things up out here, we've got a uh, flattish market with the exception of the uh, composite out here. You've got the Euro Japanese yen moving higher. The VIX index not doing uh, too much. Uh, during hour two, we'll go take a look at some of that we'll look at the summation index and anything else that you'd like but if you're off to start your tuesday thanks so much for joining us here have a great day and i look forward to seeing you tomorrow morning take care folks